headed to the boat to cook. We're in the ferry parking lot. All these cars will go on a ship and take us to the mainland. Now we go down the hill to the ferry. There it is. And all these cars in that parking lot. So I get on that ship. We're working on an 18 foot boat right now that Eric put a lot of time in at a restaurant cooking like crazy and bought a Yamaha 115. We will advertise for Yamaha. Um, and we're gonna put that on the back of the 18 footers and leave a car on the mainland and we don't have to do this anymore because it takes us about a day to go to a doctor's appointment because we're an hour away from the ferry. You gotta be there an hour early and it's about an hour and a half ride. And that, that makes for a long day when you gotta go to the mainland. It's all exciting at the beginning, different, but when you live here, kind of gets hard so we're setting up our own taxi kind of when you live on an island you kind of need uh, cars and boats to get back and forth so we're in the process of doing that uh, part of this trip is to get parts for that boat so we're gonna let these cars okay, go by Charlie's produce and then so we'll uh, Charlie and our local fire department And the Canuckians, these guys in front of us played in a band this weekend. They're from Canada. It's at the park, it was awesome. A little tidbit of useless information. They know who they are. What's the name of the band? Um, Foghorn? Foghorn, look them up. Great bluegrass. Doing good. They live on the island, two of them live on the island, the bass player and the fiddle, they're the fiddle guys Endurance. Endurance. The boat I grew up on started in my backyard. My father and my family built her. Eight and a half years in the backyard. And then we launched it. She's a little bit over 50 years old right now. And it's been left to me by my father. One of the family's treasures to take care of. The spars, the masts, are spruce. Left over from Howard Hughes's spruce goose. There's a lot of exotic woods on here. Rare you can't even get anymore. The hull itself is planked in tangiel mahogany which has been extinct since the 60s, is impervious to rotten worms. All the railings and all whatnot, you're seeing varnished at teak off the battleship Indiana. We salvaged a lot of boats. There's one of Captain Dave Baxter's carvings on the back. And he carved the carvings on the front and he's made the mass and he made our first set of sails. And you'll meet him as we do our show. The decks are fur. And this 
boat we'll be using on our show um, and cooking and going around the San Juan Islands and going on the beaches and this is our what we live on um, between this and we got a room at Dave's little rooms and then we got vans this is endurance so this is below and we'll get her ready for tonight when we shoot but this is below endurance there's a diesel stove. Tonight we'll be using electric at the dock. We won't be using a diesel stove, but we will be showing you how to cook with a diesel stove too. All hand pump, everything. This boat is what they call a ship because it's non-relying on land. We're able to go around the world. We've been through four hurricanes in this boat off the coast of Mexico. Um, so this is endurance. Welcome to endurance. Our second episode, cooking on endurance. Okay guys, we are going to cook chimichangas on a one burner deal in endurance. John told you about endurance, that's our narrator, producer, slash, we get a hundred episodes and we get some followers, then you guys can see his face until then, you're just going to hear his voice and have to look at my ugly mug. Okay, so I'm going to start you off with the, what we're going to need. Okay, you guys are going to need large tortillas, flour, okay, some good cheese, cheddar, whatever you like in your Mexican food. Okay, now how I'm doing it because I'm using one burner and I'm going to show you. I'm going to shut this off after I do it, but I get a thing of Spanish rice. Okay, about a pound, pound and a half of cooked meat that I bring. Now, I, I was telling you that I do this in a uh, crock pot. Okay, I'll buy in bulk. You can do it with chicken. You can do whatever. You can also do this with ground beef, add an onion, put a little taco seasoning in it. I'm just trying to show you how to make simple, how to stretch your food and everything else. So, see if you like it. Maybe you won't. Anyway, uh, this is pork, okay, that I've cooked off on a crock pot, pork meat, rice. Which I'm using uh, like a hot pot right now to cook to heat up the water. It's a lot faster. Like I said, if you guys are in dorms, motorhomes, whatever, however you get, can get your water heated. If you're using gas, nice gas stove, a wolf stove, I still hope you're watching this. Anyway, um, so I'm going to cook off the rice and I'll get back to you. Okay, see in a few. Might be a little wavy, hard to see in here. Like I said, I'm on a boat, okay? And the boat floats. So anyway, um, I know I cooked pork yesterday um, or last night, okay? Like I said, I pre-freeze, I, I buy in bulk a lot. I'll pre-cook it and then I'll freeze it in, pa in, in packages so that I, when we do come to the boat or even at home on the island, whatever, um, I uh, pull it out and It'll be easy to cook for dinner. Anyway, I pulled pork accidentally instead of chicken. This You can use chicken, like I said, um, ground beef, whatever you like. Um, I also do it with, I know people kill me over this, but sometimes I'll get London broils on sale or whatever it is, and I'll cook those on a crock pot or pressure cooker and cook it down. Because a lot of people can't chew steak. Okay, let's just be honest. A lot of Americans don't have the best teeth, everything else. Everything that I make is kind of bland. Okay, and you can spice it up. And then um, a lot of it I cook down so it's easy to eat because uh, there's people that I feed on the island that um, are a little older. And anyway, uh, I wanna give a shout out to Lieberhaven and Dave Baxter over there, who's a boat builder. He builds in these schooners. He did the mass and everything. Anyway, we love, we love Dave and Sherry over there. Okay, so I've got the rice pretty much done now at home I'd make my own Spanish rice up on the island I'll, I'll do that I'll show you guys how to do that later anyway um, so you got your rice done okay you can get a can of beans um, refried you can get black beans pinto beans any kind of beans you don't even need beans if you don't want them and then add as much as you want to it I, I go one package of this to a full thing of beans okay Throw it right in there. 
because this is convenient, cooking out of one pan, basically. Okay? And then I add the meat. I keep it on the heat. Stir it. Give it a consistency. It kind of breaks it down. Now, I'll tell you, a lot of people... You can also use this for burritos, taquitos. There's a lot of different stuff that you can make this mix with. But I'm going to show you how to make a really good um, chimichanga. Okay, so anyway, um, I'm going to let this heat up for a bit, and then I'll do the chimichangas. Okay, get your grades up, kids. Okay, you guys, so here you go. Okay, we've got the meat the beans, the rice. Okay, now, usually we use cast iron, but in the boat, we, it bangs around a lot of stuff. So we, we're using this pan here, little normal frying pan. I've got about three teaspoons of olive oil in there. Okay, and I'm bringing it up on, if you're using a, bring up medium, medium high on an electric to get up to heat. I, um, Never go over medium on a on a gas stove. Okay, and we're gonna build the chimichanga. So, just like a burrito, pretty much. You get your flour tortilla. I've got the cheese cut here. You can shred it, whatever you want to do. Okay, now like I said, it um, I, I do stuff mild, pretty mild. So if you want to add peppers to this, anything to spice it up, do it. Salsas, whatever, hot sauces. Okay, so, bang. For kids, make them a little smaller, whatever. I'll just make them and split them. That's about it, okay? Then you line them with cheese. And cut it, like I said, shred it. Okay. Get that. Okay, now we've got our pan hot. Okay. Fold it over like that, both sides. Fold it in to there. Then roll it. Now get those sides in there good. Roll it like that, okay? Put it this side down, and you wanna hear that little sizzle. Same way here, sides over, give it a flop. Make sure you get in there and tuck it good so all this thing's stay in there, okay? And, you know, this is the first time we've shot any kind of cooking show. But once again, we're cooking the show without a kitchen, kind of, except in the winter, of course, we'll be doing a lot of cooking on this thing, and you'll see as the shows go on. Anyway, what we're doing is browning these all the way around. You want to go this side. You don't want to do them fast, just nice and easy. One side, both sides, and then stick them up on their sides with tongs or whatever you got. Okay, and I'll be back when they're cooked. Tongs. Okay, so we're back. Okay, so if you can see, golden brown around. Okay, take your time. There they are. Now, a lot of times, now listen, I'm telling you, you can serve this meal and serve four to six people, okay, depending on how big you make them. You chop up some lettuce, put some tomatoes on them, whatever you want, okay? Now here we've got plates from World War II taken from the officers. Uh, well, I'm not gonna even say what ship or when, okay? I don't wanna be taken to federal prison, but anyway, we've got stolen plates. I hope you like them. Just kidding, or am I? Okay, so here's your chimichanga. Like I said, you can shred up some lettuce and put it on a bed of lettuce. Okay, I throw a little uh, sour cream on there, ba-boom, okay. And we've got some ch fresh chopped tomatoes. Okay, you can put hot sauce, salsas, whatever you want. But anyway, there's your chip, cheap chimichanga.
okay, on, on endurance. We love you. I hope you guys watch more. Uh, kids, like I said, get your grades up. Okay. See get you next out. time. Bye-bye. That's what's called a Charlie Noble. It's a smokestack to the cook stove. Charlie was a cook on an old square rigger, and every time he come into port, in the old days, these were made out of bronze and brass, and he would polish his, and it was the shiniest one around, and it became known as a Charlie Noble, because he was so noble to his ship and his crew for the cooking that he did for them.